Hello, I'm Lugog TV, and with Tuska on a collision course with Gilinor, I'm here to better equip you with the knowledge of how we, as a community, must band together to stop her from destroying us. So with the precious time we have left, let's get to it. Quickly, we will be discussing items in this order, so please click on the item you're most interested in if you're looking for something in specific. You get onto Tuska by teleporting to her by way of Lodestone. So after you open up the Lodestone screen, you'll notice a new button near the top right which, when clicked, will zoom out from Gilinor, then zoom onto Tuska's back. Clicking the teleport option there will transport you to her like any other Lodestone, but with a neat little animation. You will notice a new interface piece, which simply states how much each faction has contributed that day, as well as the time until the next event. It also says how many reward points you currently have on the bottom left of that same interface. We'll be quickly covering the extracurricular activities before tackling the actual world event, so please click the annotation at the top left of the screen if you aren't interested in briefly hearing about the quills and parasites. Anywho, jumping right into it, the woodcutting quills are very straightforward. You cut them down, and they'll eventually regrow. Rinse and repeat. I haven't researched the experience gained per hour here, but from the lack of people actually woodcutting them, I couldn't imagine it being all that great. You can also gain points from finding Tuska Fragments, which you can give to Wizard Chambers for 5 points per shard. With the Agility Quills, you can gain upwards of 80k experience per hour at level 90 Agility and above. Since the XP scales per level, simply multiply how much experience you get with 2,550, and that'll be a reasonable amount of experience per hour for you. You simply want to stand on the quill that appears to be electrified, otherwise you will get a tenth of the experience that you normally would. Which quill is electrocuted changes every 30 seconds, so be on your toes or you will be wasting your time. I don't have much information on the Tusk of Parasites as well, but what I've heard from various sources are they aren't great for experience or fragments, so you'd probably be better off doing agility quills for fragments and slayer tests for slayer experience. You are only allowed to use these skilling methods for about 80 minutes before being barred from them for the remainder of that day. Since fragments are found randomly, how many you will receive each day is also random. Alright, now we will discuss the actual events. After choosing a faction to represent, you can then hop onto the starting island near Wizard Chamber, which will put you into an event after a short time. A new event starts every hour, but you can join an event at any time if you haven't already participated in one that same hour. The events are instanced, so if you're alone on the starting island, you'll be alone for the duration of that event. After you and a group of people, or even if you alone jump onto the starting island, the round will start and your objective for every island would be collect 25% of the Anima Mundi's power as shown by the progression bar. You collect the Anima Mundi's power from simply participating while on that island. The updated interface piece shows both how much Anima Mundi power you have collected as well as your distance from Tuska's head, shown by the progression bar with a little light representing you and bumps on the bar representing the four different islands. As of this first week, there are four islands that you will have to do in a random order. You will be placed on the next island after spending five minutes on your current island, until you run out of islands where you will be redirected onto Tuska's... well, Tusk. The four islands are Lost Souls, Overgrown Remnants, Lightning Storm, and Broken Island. And on every island, there is a small question mark icon, which you can click on to remind you what to do if you forget after watching this video. If you're curious of any one island specifically, click it. Go ahead. Don't be shy. <clears throat> we'll be starting with the Lost Souls Island, which has two things you can do on it. The first, and most obvious, would be to pick up the Holy Torch, equip it, and then use the torch on the tentacles bursting from the ground near the much larger tentacle. This torch will last for 30 seconds before extinguishing, or you'll have to go back and pick up another. During your last minute on this island, the torch will last for 60 seconds instead of the original 30. You can simply do this, or you can climb down the rock face to a graveyard. Inspecting the altar there will give you a relic, which you can use after digging up one of the graves. You will then jump into a spiritual realm where there are ghosts wandering about. 
you will notice two distinct types of ghosts, being tormented and lost souls, where you can kill the tormented souls to become one, where you can then lead them to the last rite's beam of light, where you will be then reverted to normal and the spirit will be freed. The lost soul, however, you can capture with the relic you acquired from the altar, where you will then return to the altar to release the no longer lost soul. The Overgrown Remnants Island's objective is to collect mysterious herbs from three different means, where you then crush the herbs and use them on the roots of the large plant in the center. The root will automatically direct itself to a nearby flower pod, where, when it reaches it, the pod will bloom and you will be able to collect the seed from it by clicking on it, where you can then return the seeds to the center plant. The three ways to obtain these herbs needed to grow the roots are by killing the tentacles that emerge from the ground, cutting from the large vines that drape across the island, or by mining them from meteors that fall onto the island. The best way to obtain the herbs, in my opinion, would be to cut the vines, as they are plenty and semi-quick to cut. Doing these activities to gain the herbs will give you some of the Anima Mundi's power, but the majority of it will be from returning the seeds, so make sure to do that. The roots you are growing can go under the vines draping across the island, but you can simply cut the vine away to reveal the root and continue. The Lightning Storm Island may be my favorite island, if not overgrown remnants. The objective of this island is to redirect the various energy sources found there into the unstable core in the center to collect the Anima Mundi's power. There are again three ways to collect power, which is simply killing the light creatures that spawn, which, when defeated, will charge you. You will have to click on the unstable core in the center of the island to release this charge. There will also appear circles on the ground, which you can simply click on to redirect lightning for hunter experience. Make sure to click these whenever they appear, as they're easy points and nice experience. Lastly, you can build pylons around the island to act as a lightning rod, where a sentient lightning creature will eventually appear, destroying that pylon. You can click on this creature to begin luring it, where you simply want to get to the opposite side of the unstable core than it is, where it will then explode after making contact with the core. Imagine the luring part as if you were pitfall hunting. It is best if these three methods are used in conjunction with each other instead of just focusing on one. My priorities would be diversion, pylons, and then finally killing. And the last island to discuss would be Broken Island, where it can be related to the Brimhaven Agility course where you're looking to tag the active runestone. You are only able to travel around the four broken islands in a clockwise manner, where traveling from three of these islands will grant you agility experience, where one will grant you dungeoneering experience. There also falls meteors on these islands, which you can mine for mining experience and also to collect some of the Anima Mundi's power. If you are doing this island with other people, every 30 seconds a random person will get a gate stone which everyone else can use to teleport to them by clicking the added teleport option to the Tusca interface above. If you fail to receive the 25% Anima Mundi power from any one island, you can make it back on any of the other islands. So if you fail to make that 25% mark, don't worry, just work extra hard on the next island. After you spend 5 minutes on every island, you will be then transported onto Tusca's Tusk, where you will then run along it until you get to her face. After climbing up her tooth, you will notice numerous scars on her head. You want to find the one you can stab, and stab it. After some epic scream rumbling and special effects, you will be teleported back onto Tuska's back. Kudos, you finished the event for that day. You can gain up to 1,000 reward points from the event each day, but you can play the event every hour if you so choose. You unlock a title after stabbing Tuska while 100% charged 5 times in a given week. Within the first week, you'll unlock the Harbinger title, the second week unlocks Of Gilinor, third week the Beast Slayer, and the last week the Tusco Raider title. There are numerous rewards you can get from this event, the rewards being a new set of War Priest armor, which gives you a chance to hit your maximum damage. It does not, however, increase how much you hit cosmetic spear overrides, and a magic offhand override. Four abilities, where three you may have unlocked from previous events, or the God Wars dungeon, four new emotes, and experience lamps. All in all, great stuff. 
It'll take you 12 days to get the full armor set while only doing one event each day. 5 days to get each weapon override, 4 days for the new ability, or 15 days for all 4, and 5 days for the emotes. In total, it'll take you around 25 days to get everything excluding experience lamps and the 3 previous abilities. So, get to it! God knows I will have to. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something you didn't know before. But was there anything vital I forgot to include into this tutorial, or anything I overcomplicated? If so, please leave a comment and I'll see if I can implement it into this video. In a world where Tusca the World Devourer has her blind eyes and gluttonous stomach set, Insert name. Must band together with their RuneScape brethren to defend against the greatest threat to life that Gilinor may ever know. Good luck, and God bless.